All right, so in the last tutorial, we talked about the different stroke modes, which greatly modify the way that your brushes are applied. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go over this first batch of voxel tools, how it works, and a few of the things that they can be used for. So to start, I'm going to just get myself a clean surface to work with. So I'm just going to choose a sphere here, make it pretty big. All right, now the first tool that you will always start out with is the grow tool. Now this tool does exactly what it says it does and that it just simply grows the voxel surface out. See if I make it very big and very strong, then I can start to grow it out. I am not a huge fan of this tool, but it is a good way to get started, add a little bit of subtle detail. Now the big problem with this tool though is that it is not affected by your alpha. So I can pick any one of these alphas like this stitches one I made and you'll see it just always will build out with a circular alpha. Now the next tool we have here is the smooth tool. And this is kind of redundant, but if you need a really intense smoothing, this is the tool for you. So let me first off build some very rough details. I can hit smooth, and I can start to smooth those out. Now, you don't have to go to the smooth tool, however. If I go to something like the build tool, if you hold down shift with pretty much any tool, you will activate smoothing. So you see how the line changes from red to green? That means that you're smoothing. And you can right click and drag up and down in order to change the strength of the smoothing. So you see with very low strength, it's not really smoothing that much, but with very high strength, it smooths very quickly. Now the next tool down is the fill tool. And what that does is that will fill in some gaps. So let me just first create a little carving in our object. If I go to the fill tool, then it will just start to fill that in. Now, if you want to fill in an area like this where it's already pretty smoothed out, you're going to need a very big brush and a very high strength. Now the next really important one that you're going to need to know is the build brush. Now you've heard me mention this one quite a few times already, and it's the most versatile. If you're coming from a software like ZBrush, this functions identically to the clay buildup brush. And if I'm not mistaken, it even defaults to a square alpha, just like it does in ZBrush. And what this does is it just allows you to build up a shape with an alpha. Now this one's very responsive to alpha, so if I pick, say, this little chunky looking alpha here, then you'll see that the uh, shape of my brush changes drastically. I'll stick to the square one for now though. And I can build up. Now at this point I should also mention that if you hold down control, you'll see how the line changes from red to blue. If I don't hold down control, as you see, I'm building up out. If I hold down control, I will build down. Then I'll go into the surface. Now because of voxels, this also means that I can then carve into here, and then carve into there. Really cut out a little cavern of this place. Alright, let me undo that. Now the key difference to know between build and the next one, extrude, is that build will always be building up, but extrude has a limit to how high it will go. Now what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if I go in with build, let me change my stroke mode to the constant pressure. If I go over the exact same region, it will just keep going up and up. 
So you see we get a little mountain built up there. If I go in with extrude though, the exact same constant pressure, then you'll see that even if I brush over the same area, it'll only go up so high. So this is actually very useful if you want to add some padding to an area, if you want to create almost like kind of a rough terracing effect. You see we have two very distinct layers. Let me choose a more of a circular alpha. So that's extrude. It would be very difficult to get a shape like this using build. But you could if you used, say, a little circular stroke mode. And then we build again and again and again. So there are multiple ways that you can get certain different effects. And Now, so that's extrude and build. The next really important one is going to be the scrape. This is another one that you'll be using very often. And what this one does is that it does exactly what the title would have you believe. It scrapes away from a surface. As you see, I had this rough detail. Now, this is different from smooth. What smooth will do is it will average out the surface and you see we get this very rounded result but with scrape it flattens it out so you see we get a much flatter result now if you go up here you'll see a little check mark for soft scrape so let me go back to my build brush let me just build up two little mounds just to try and show you the difference. If I go to scrape, so this one is with soft scrape turn on, and this one is with soft scrape turned off. Now hopefully you can see the difference. That the soft scrape, the edges of it are a little bit more beveled than with the not soft scrape. You get a lot more of a chiseling effect here when soft scrape is turned off. So if you're doing any kind of plating or if you need any really harsh edges, then scrape is the way to accomplish that. Now the next one down is pinch. And this will pull voxels together. Now, it's important to understand that when you're working with voxels, this tool can only go so far because it can't actually pull the points together. It's only pulling the filled voxels, so there's only so sharp that you can go. If you want to go sharper, you have to go into what's known as surface mode. And I'll be talking about surface mode a little bit more down the line. But right now we're in voxels. So just be aware that while pinch certainly has its uses, it's not good for making very harsh creased edges. And the last one down here in the list of default voxel tools is smudge. And this one will just start to shift details around. So if you're working on, say, some clothing, this is a great way to get some wrinkles in there. So I go in there with a I just start sculpting, maybe sculpt down, then sculpt up, then sculpt up kind of across, and I go in with my smudge tool. You see that I can really start to get this kind of silky effect going. See, there we go. Those are starting to look like some nice folded wrinkles. But those are the basic voxel tools. In the next video, I will, before we move on to some of these other adjustment tools, I'll be talking over a few other different ways that you can modify these tools using the alphas, the brush options, and all the different types of symmetry you have access to inside of 3D Coat.